You. You're right there. I guarantee you make this mistake, and it's costing you rounds and more importantly, games. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to fix it so you don't have to make this mistake ever again. So let's get into it. I'm going to cut straight to the chase. I'm not going to waste your time, but I do encourage you to stick around this video. Can I tell you how to fix this problem? Because it's one of three things that's happening to you, and it's a super easy fix. Now, this problem that you're having is that you waste time on attack. Now, this is because of one of three things. Number one, you play too slow and you play methodically, and that's not how you play Siege. Now, you're not supposed to play methodically, but you play too slow. I'm going to tell you how to fix that in the first clip, okay, in the first part of this video. In the second part of this video, it's that you don't have a plan. A lot of the time, the reason why you're just stalling out is because you don't have a plan, okay? That's a big reason you stall out too. Sometimes you play too slow. Sometimes you don't have a plan. Sometimes it's both at the same time. And number three, the biggest thing, in my opinion, probably next to, you know, making a plan and not having one in the first place is going to be communication and information gathering. If you lack in any three of these things, this is why you're stalling out. This is why you're playing too slow, why you're not winning these rounds, and why you're not winning these games. So in order to win these games, convert these rounds to wins, you need to have all three of these things checked off and, and you know, all, all done. We are going to start out with part one on to why you're losing rounds on attack, and more importantly, losing games because of this one issue, okay? Part one is going to be talking about win conditions and talking about you playing too slow. Now, in order to understand why you're losing, we need to talk about win conditions first. Really quick synopsis of them. There are two ways to win on attack and siege. Number one, killing five enemies. That's number one. Number two, defusing the bomb. Usually, while defusing the bomb, you do kill five enemies in total while going for this objective, okay? Now, in lower ranks, you're going to be killing five enemies a lot more because it's easier to do. But on higher elo and in pro league, you see a lot of objective play because that is how you're going to force the win condition to win the game, <laughs> is, is to do that. Now, we need to understand is that in order to force either of these winning conditions, that you have to play at a certain tempo, a certain speed throughout the round. And that's, you know, somewhere between fast and slow. Every player I've ever met, from champion to pro player to copper, has the same issue. They will play too slow. Now, it's not every time. It's not all the time. It's not an every time thing. But it is enough where they slowly add up and you slowly lose rounds because maybe, not, maybe you're not playing too slow, but your teammates are playing too slow. I'm going to tell you how to fix that. So part one of this, what, what's going on? This is probably only affecting 20 to 30% of players that do play too slow, which is you know, every player in the game that plays too slow. And that's going to be you play too passive. Now, I'm going to show you a clip of a teammate of mine playing too passive, and I'm going to tell you how to fix it because it's a really easy fix, okay? Really easy fix. If this is your issue and you play too passive and you're playing too slow and methodically, there's a super easy fix to this. I'm going to tell you after I show you this clip and kind of explain what she's doing in this clip and why she's doing it wrong. Hey, hi. So, what's going on, Disrupt? I have I have a video to make. Here's a little prime example of this. Uh, on attack, you have to play aggressive. You're attacking. You're not defending. So, sitting here doing what the Zofia is doing, holding this angle, is going to provide no value to your team and is going to be overall detrimental because you're not doing anything to help the team. You're sitting here doing nothing as the clock ticks down. This is a bad thing to do. Don't do this. As you can see by the clip, I was a little bit passionate and heated in the moment, but I kind of conveyed the point the best I could. More context of the clip, the Zofia had been sitting in blue for quite some time, and after she did what she did on what you saw in the clip, she also then sat in blue for another 30 seconds, and eventually I think she ended up dying in blue with 20 seconds left on the clock. So what I'm saying is what you do, not all the time, but you will hold angles and you will make plays that in your mind makes a lot of sense, sitting here being tactical and slow. But if you, you know, use your context clues around the map, expecting the Zofia, you know your Maverick was down laundry and your line was on big tower stairs, and you sitting in blue doesn't do anything because it's a neutral position. No one is holding you, and you're not holding anyone making any progress. She does end up moving up in that clip, taking elbow control, but then she just holds that angle, which is a better angle to hold, but she doesn't act anything, she doesn't relay any information to her team, and she just sits there. So what I'm saying that you guys do, most of the time, is you're like that Zofia, is you do things that seem meaningful. For instance, holding blue is relatively meaningful in most senses. However, if people are already dead across the map, it's less impactful because those blue defenders get pulled off from that defense to move where their dead teammates were playing, because it's more impactful for them to be playing there. So. A lot of the time what's going on is you guys think you're doing something positive for the team by holding an angle, trying to catch a cross, but really you're being detrimental to the team. The Zofia not acting on the information she had and or acting fast resulted in the fact that her teammates kind of got stuck and stalled out in positions because instead of helping her teammates, Zofia was holding blue, which at the time seemed impactful because it's an impactful thing to do. But the perceived impactfulness and the actual impactfulness of the action that she took is very clear when you see that she didn't help her team out, and then she ended up wasting another 40 seconds after this clip sitting in blue. So what I'm trying to convey to you, the audience, is don't sit in blue, which I guess is just a metaphor for stop holding an angle. Holding angles can seem like an impactful thing to do, but in reality, what you're doing is wasting a lot of time. If you want to hold an angle, the best way to do it is run a gridlock or a nomad and cover your flank, or 
if you're trying to hold an aggressive angle, kind of what that Zofia was doing, she was trying to hold an aggressive angle from someone rotating down back big stairs or pillar through blue to the rotate hole or from the rotate hole to blue. If you want to do something like that, play a more aggressive angle. She was holding a very passive angle behind the blue barrels and from the blue doorway. If you are going to play like that Zofia and you're going to want to hold an angle, which seems like an impactful thing to do, which sometimes it can, hold an aggressive one. Get really up in their business and try to hold an, an angle that's going to give you the best chance of getting a kill if that's what you're going to do. What she was doing was not giving her any chance of a kill, and she didn't recognize that. So, what you need to do is next time you're in a gunfight holding an angle, or next time you're going to hold an angle, ask yourself, is this being productive? Can this help? What is going on? Why am I holding this? And if you can't have any reasonable answers to the questions you're asking yourself, you probably should not be holding an angle. Now, that's one big thing to improve doing that. There's also another big thing. A lot of the time, in that case, the Zofia was holding it. I don't have an example of this, unfortunately, but sometimes you might not have a clear sense as to why you're doing what you're doing. And let me explain that. What I mean by this is that you get stalled out on attack, or you might not have a game plan going in. So that's the other two things that forbid you from trying to achieve your winning condition, that impose you reaching your winning condition. Thing number one is holding angles when you're not supposed to be holding angles. That is probably the most prime example is that Zofia, and I see a lot of people do this in every ELO pretty much. Thing number two is not having a plan of attack. So here's what you need to do, okay? You need to get a plan of attack. Before the round starts, ask your team. Communicate with your team. Hey, what are we attacking? Why are we attacking it? And how can we best go about this? That is what I would highly recommend you do. And if you're not doing that, you are kind of trolling. Imagine if we coordinated that push that round, okay? The Sophia would not be stuck in blue holding an angle. Now, it is very possible that she might hold an angle because that was the type of player she was through and through that match, okay? So I'm going to try to give an example of coordinating the team prior to a round, okay, and showing you how that escalated and how that played out and how much more smooth it went instead of just holding an angle. So let's get into that. Okay, hold on. Wait, this, this, is, this is an interruption. Okay, sorry for interrupting your scheduled programming of the tier list. Today, I've got a great offer for you. A great deal, perhaps. The best of all time. You receive one nice skin right here. Look at that. Look at that. Look how nice that is. Woof. Wow. Look at that. It's amazing. Absolutely beautiful. For the low price of probably like $7 in the item shop, in the esports item shop. You know, go, go, to, go, go to Siege. Okay. Go to, go to the item shop. Scroll down to esports. Click the DG skin. If you don't have it, look at it. Look how nice it is. Look, I'm going to show it one more time. Ooh, ooh, it's right there. Ooh, wow. Look at that. Beautiful. Go buy it. Okay, you support the DG pro team, the DG staff, and most importantly, the DG content creators. So if you would like to support DG in any way, shape, or form, hey, buy the item skin. Look how good it is. One more time. Boom. Right there. Look how good it is. Amazing. Okay, with that being said, let's get back to the regularly scheduled program. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break down this clip. This is from a live stream about a week ago, um, and I'm, I'm just going to break down what goes on. So before the round starts, in the previous clip, you said, hey, you know, I was telling, uh, you know, Twitch chat and... Um, just kind of like the viewers, you need to always try to make a plan of attack because the previous round we did win, but we didn't have a plan of attack and we only won because two of our teammates really showed up huge in the fragging department. So I was like, hey, let's make a plan of attack. Now I made a plan of attack. It's kind of long. It doesn't really matter. But what you need to know is in drone phase and prep phase and pick phase, whatever you want to call it, you need to start making a plan of attack. So I coordinated with my teammate here and uh, I was like, hey, let's go push together. I'm going to push big tower. And then they're like, okay, we're going to push armory, which doesn't really work out for them in the end. But, uh, you know, at, what matters is that we made a, a plan of attack and we tried to stick with it. So here I'm pushing through Big Tower. I, I got Big Tower open and I'm pushing through Attic already. And I'm going to just kind of show you how it plays out and how uh, we're able to win this round. It's an important round that we need to win. We're up 3-1 and we just want to close it out. So I'm going to try to show you how we win it. Basement stairs. Up with it, Master. This is a bad play, chat. Don't go for this. This is risky. So I'm telling chat this is a bad play, which it is objectively a bad play. So I threw the Selma to make noise so I could what cross are you and doing? try to get a pick. The nice thing about this clip is because I was streaming this, I ended up making this a YouTube video on my own channel, but I, I am going to be commentating what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Talk to me in my house, I don't see a Valcam here, but I don't like this plant spot. I want to equalize man advantage if possible. So I'm talking to chap saying, hey, um, right now I guess it's not a plan, but this is kind of what I want to do is I want to equalize man advantage. Um, we are down. Now my teammate does go through my breach hole here, which I don't know why he did, but he did that. It's his prerogative. And, um, you know, this puts us in a really sticky situation. It puts us in a 2v4, which is not, not ideal. Definitely not ideal. And, um, you know, previously in the prep phase, our plan of attack was to take Big Tower and to take Armory, and that just falls through. Uh, you know, we lose a pick on the Roamer. We're, we're losing a pick here. On the Roam Queen, we're losing another pick on the Lion. Like, things are not going 
to plan and we're going to have to improvise. Now, I know I can't plan this situation for two reasons. There's a Mozzie on the board. I know he has C4. And there's a Valkyrie on the board. I know she has information. So I can't plant here. And because I can't plant here, that does change. Because the whole thing was we're going to cross. The lion's going to go off. I'm going to get a cross. My jackal's going to smoke my cross. Um, because he's going to be pushing for armory. He gets to pick armory, chucks it on through. It's going to cover the kid's door and bunks so I can cross and plant in default. Now, we didn't expect him to have a Valkyrie, um, but now that we know we have a Valkyrie and a Mozzie we're dealing with, things on the plan change, and this is kind of what I'm talking about, is you have to have a plan of attack. And you really honestly need two or three plans of attack because our plan of attack failed, and you can see what happens here, uh, which is stalling out. And this is a thing a lot of players do, is, it, you know, what it happens. It's okay, but I'm trying to tell you guys and help you guys around the fact that this does happen and this is an issue. So, you're going to see me stall out here. It's a minute on the clock. We're down man advantage, and I'm going to stall out um, by not playing the objective. Hey, who thinks I plant? I can't plant. When teammates tell me to plant, I can't. I know there is a Valkyrie cam. I don't know where it is, but I do know they have one. I also know they have a Mozzie. I mean, there's guaranteed at least one piece of information on me. This guy needs a fly out. Kids, there's one to my right. So luckily, I get a pick here. And, uh, you know, we slowly bring man advantage back. We're still down one, but it's better than, uh, than a two-on-one per player. So, that's why I couldn't plant, is they had someone below with C4, and I knew that. And luckily, our teammates were giving calls, which is nice. So, as you can see there, I saw that for about 10 to 20 seconds in total throughout the duration of this clip, which is really bad when we're trying to force the win condition of winning by defusal, because us trying to force the win condition of winning by numbers isn't really happening. We have a Blackbeard and an Ace. I'm on low HP. He's full HP, but he has a slow firing gun, and we have to play against three. This is going to make this a lot more difficult for us to win, so we need to play off of the objective. Do you want to go plant? The is no longer in your possession. So I'm telling my Blackbird that he needs to go plant. Now, a thing you need to know is I'm playing extremely hot this game. I think I'm 9-1 and one at this point, or 8-1 and one at this point, so I'm, I, am, I am playing really well. Um, now, I'm asking him to plant because I want him to plant. Now, in most cases, probably don't do this, but I was feeling it, so that's why I did that. Can't. He couldn't. He was like stuck. So another thing that you need to know as an individual player is the reason you stall out is I could have sat there and kids and done nothing and fake planted to the cows come home. Don't fake plant. It's usually not going to be beneficial unless it's a one v one. In in a one v x, it's it's I'm just gonna get me killed and it's gonna get my teammate killed. So what I'm doing here is I'm I'm forcing a play, right? I don't know if I can win by man advantage at this point. I'm thinking probably not. So I'm going to a play. I'm gonna try to equal out man advantage. And I explain this in the clip. Now, this is a thing that you need to do, and this is going to come with time, is not stalling out, right? I'm doing something that has relatively low perceived value in terms of what I'm actually doing. But in reality, it is, a, it is very much value that I'm doing this. And it's very valuable that I am doing this. So if you do catch yourself in a situation like this, you need to make the split second decision. Should I play for the objective? Which I could have just dilly-dallied around in games for a bit longer and maybe gone for a plant on the foosball table. Um, but I chose not to do that. I chose to do this, and I think this was the correct decision looking back on it. I'm throwing that in to make audio so I can push up late. Nice. So, I get that kill. There's 30 seconds left on the clock. It is now a 2v2. I've neutralized man advantage. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold this angle because I don't know where they are. I don't have any information in the site. So, this is a probably a risky play, and um, you'll see how this plays out. And I'm going for the pre-fire. I come down here to see if anyone's down here. I don't have health to tank this. Now, thankfully, our Blackbeard does pick up a kill, bring Man Avenger in our favor, but now I'm getting spotted by Scan, and there's 20 seconds left in the clock. So I could hold that, but I know I don't have the time. So as, as you heard me say, we don't have the time for this, which is absolutely true. We do not have the time for this. Now, what's important is we made a plan, right? Once we got man advantage back, um, we, we made the plan. And, I mean, if you really want to dive del delve deeper into this, I did say that we need to neutralize man advantage um, probably like 45 seconds ago in this clip to a minute ago um, when it was even or when we were down one or two. I said we need to neutralize it before we go for an objective. Um, but, you know, I'm telling my teammate he needs a plan and I will cover him. That's the plan. We made a plan and that's the plan. Sometimes a plan does not have to be a plan from the start. Things go awry a lot of the time. So what we've done here is I've made a new plan. I'm sticking to this new plan, which I think is overall a better plan. And that's what something you need to know. Again, this will come with time. 
is knowing what your plan is, executing that plan, and making new plans. Now, granted, I have a few thousand hours in the game, so I'm able to make decisions like this um, and, and you know, execute them to the best of my ability. Sometimes you might be second-guessing yourself. Never do that. Make a plan. Stick with it. I said, hey, get the bomb. Plant. I'll cover you. I've said it twice now, and uh, my teammate is going to trust me, and this is what's going to happen, how the round plays out. Go left corner if you can. Five seconds remaining. Main window. Nice so we won. Uh, thankfully, we won, but that's not always the case. But what I'm trying to tell you, what I'm trying to convey to the audience, is make a plan, stick to it. A lot of the time, why people stall out is because they don't have a plan, right? So, you know, that's just how it is. There's all these back to win conditions, right? You can the win condition of killing five people, the win condition of defusing the bomb, and usually the win condition of defusing the bomb forces the win condition of killing the five people. As you can see here, that's what we did. Now, why this is important is a lot of people don't even have a chance to reach that winning condition. And here is why. They stall out for one of three reasons, okay? Reason number one, an individual player holds an angle or they play too slow. That is just the way they play. We saw that in the Zofia clip. We saw how she played very slow, very passively, and that right there is not going to win. That's not going to help achieve one of the winning conditions because she's not getting any kills and she's not taking any control of the map, which means she's not able to be in a position to help her teammates to get the diffuser down if that's the winning condition they're trying to push. And like I just said, she's not in a position to get any kills for the other winning condition. Okay. Number two, another reason they stall out is because they don't have a plan. Instead of someone stalling out because that's just how they play, they play slow, someone might not have a plan and not having a plan can lead to a stall out. Right here is a great example of a clip of me having a plan, executing that plan, but also stalling out. You see me stall out on two different occasions. When I'm top white, after I get the kill on the Jaeger, I stall out for another 15 seconds trying to get a kill on the kids and Checking the flank, which you, I, I have to check the flank in case she's coming through Zulu. I don't know if she is. I don't have any information on that at that time. But I am still stalling out as a player. And when I had the diffuser, I was stalling out. I didn't know what to do. I knew I couldn't plant, but I didn't know what to do to help me. Maybe I could have gone for frags. Maybe I could have looked for a better place to plant. There's a good chance that if I planted on the couch, I would have been probably fine because I had my teammate holding my cross. But I don't know that for sure, and I didn't take the risk. And not taking that risk stalled me out. I would have rather died going for an objective play than stalling out. Now, thankfully, we won this round and it unfolded in a favorable way for me and my teammate, but that's not always the case. And I hope this can help you realize one of the two reasons why you're failing. And we're talking about reason number three, why you stall out and why you can't win games because of you stalling out and playing too slow. Last but not least, the last reason why you're stalling out and you're unable to convert rounds because you can't get to the winning condition in time because you stalled out is going to be communication. Now, this is probably the most prevalent and the most important. However, I don't really have a, uh, a good example of this if you look at the past two clips i do call out to the Sophia. hey no one's there you can push up and then um in the clip of me playing you know there was a lot of communication going on and because of that communication it afforded us opportunities to take advantage of the game to start swinging the momentum in our favor by making plays that's what you need to know and a lot of time a reason people stall out and hold angles is because they don't have information this is this is a you know holding angles is a byproduct of lack of information and gathering so you got to be on drones and drone face and in the beginning of the round getting information so you don't stall out. The worst thing you can do is stall out and hold an angle against someone who's not even there. A ghost, for instance. I see this a lot of time on the map consulate. We'll see players go into admin and then hold admin to long desk or admin to top spiral, which doesn't make any sense because if they droned, they'd realize there's absolutely no one up there when they're trying to do the roam clear. So make sure you drone and gather information. This is a quick tip. And, you know, we see, we, we use this as a little tip and we give it in a lot of our videos um, because it's it's pretty important, even though it's so simple, gathering information and, 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 you know, using that information, telling your teammates, hey, no one's here. Hey, you can push this will save you a lot of time. Those five seconds of you giving that call out might save 30 seconds from a guy who might have just sat there and held an angle. So that's important. And I'm trying to convey that to you. I wish I had more clips of, of showing exactly how information is used to get kills and, you know, not holding an angle. But that's all I have to say for today. Guys, it's been Vex and this has been an absolute banger of a video to make. I really hope this can help you guys with your guys' issue of stalling out. I know a lot of you deal with it, even though you might think of it subconsciously. Maybe it's not even a thing that you think I, I have an issue with, but hopefully this video opens your eyes to that. With that being said, guys, it's been Vexian. Peace out. See you guys later.